you'll always find me knitting, 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 knitting. Hello, welcome back to my channel. As you know from the last sock video that I posted, I have knit another pair of socks. And so now it's time to pick a new pattern and do another one. <laughs> Cause we're gonna do this 52 times. I don't like actually want to destroy this book because it's a nice book and it has like things in it that I want to use, you know, like I've only done this twice. So I don't necessarily want to, to harm the book too much but I was thinking like maybe we could like throw it across the room and like see what page it lands on. Like that would be kind of fun, right? To pick a pattern. Although if I get a pattern that I'm not really vibing with today, I might, we might have to throw it a few times. Like there are some slippers in here that I do want to knit, I think for my grandma. Let me show you. I have like, okay, I'm sorry. The table, I'm shaking the table because I'm so excited. So since I started doing this, some people have asked for socks. Like one of my coworkers, she, she asked, oh my gosh, I'm like kind of hyper right now. One of my coworkers asked if she bought me a ball of yarn if I would make her a pair of socks. And I was like, yeah, you should pick a pattern from this book and then I can like make you a pair of socks from this book. So that's the one person. And then like, I want to make my aunt a pair and my cousin a pair when I go to Seattle. And I want to make my grandmother a pair of slippers. That was why I started talking about this because there are some slippers in here that didn't really appeal to me. And I was like going through trying to think about like who would like these things. And there's a pair of slippers in here that I think my grandma would really, really like with. These are not them, but this is another pair of slippers that are kind of cute. Like maybe my aunt would like those. I don't know. <laughs> my aunt is so sweet. She would probably like like literally anything. Like if I made her like the ugliest pair of socks, she would be like, Oh my God, Eliza, thank you so much. I love people like that. Where are these slippers? Oh, here they are. Oh my God, the picture is so small. Oh, the picture is so small. <laughs> they're like little, well, they're, I was gonna say they're little shoes. <laughs> they're like little ballet flat type slippers. And I think my grandma would like them. I think she has slippers like that. Yeah, I think if I make slippers, I'll make, I don't, why am I even talking about this? Oh, cause I was talking about the patterns I didn't want to make. Yeah, so I can make those for my grandma. <laughs> oh yeah, and then I'm also, I'm gonna be in Portland and I'm gonna get a tattoo. And I saw on the tattoo artist's like Q and A, it was like, it was about tipping. And it was like, it's standard to like leave a 20% tip, but if you can't do that, like it's totally fine and it's also nice to like bring gifts. Like you could bring like an energy drink. Like they weren't like big gifts, like big extravagant gifts, but I was thinking like, what? Like that's so cool. Like I would still tip for sure, but I might knit the tattoo artist a pair of socks <laughs> because I was looking at their Instagram and they have a picture of themselves wearing one of those Hope Macaulay giant like knit roving sweaters and i was just thinking like oh maybe they would like a pair of socks i at this point like if you buy me a ball of yarn i will knit you a pair of socks like i'm really into it right now let's pick a pattern i think it would be fun <laughs> i'm having way too much fun with this i think it would be fun if we throw the book across the room and pick a pattern and then i also have like all these balls of yarns I have this yarn. This is, why am I telling you this? I already told you what this was in, well, actually, I don't think I did tell you what this was in my yarn stash video. I think I just said it was pretty. <laughs> this is Knit, Knit, oh, Logi, what? Knit a Logi by Knit Crate. Oh, is that one of those knit services? This is Knitology, Knitology Cozy Sock. Color is called Citrus Squeeze. It's Merino, Nylon, Cashmere. Yeah, so that could be an option. I have yellow. This is from Scrap, so it's mystery yarn. Um, and then I have, let's do this one. This is a Scrap Space Dye, I don't know what it is. Okay, let's throw the book across the room. I'm so sorry, book. Should I just like 
Or maybe I should like, I don't know how to do this. It didn't work. <laughs> it landed like this. Uh, let me try again. Oh. Oh, maybe that's... There's like paint from the floor on it now? What? Oh, I'll throw it on the couch. Let me just open it. It didn't work again. How can I throw this so it will open? This is so stupid. Okay, that idea is not working. So I'm just gonna pick one and then we'll just pick a yarn that looks good. Who can we make a pair of socks for? I don't know. I don't wanna pick one. I want I want the book to pick for me. I have heard a lot of people talk about the porch light socks. These. Um, maybe I could knit the porch light socks and I could use this yarn. Like I guess they would just be like oatmeal and then they would have like green. <laughs> Is that lame? I don't know what to do. I wanted the book to pick for me. Or we can make some more lacy socks. I'm really enjoying the lace patterns. What am I doing? Maybe I should pick a faster pair. Is that lazy? Is that lazy of me? I'm already getting lazy. Oh no, you know what I should do? I should pick one that has a different kind of heel because I'm trying to learn. I want to learn all the heels. So I did like a stockinette heel and then I did slip stitch heel. I wonder if there are any toe up books. Toe up books, toe up patterns because I have not done a pair of toe up socks yet. Let me try to find one of those. That can be fun. I think I figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to knit a pair of socks for my aunt. Wait, what size needles do you need? Size one, I think I have one. Okay, I do have them. Size one, these are so long. I figured it out after, I don't know, 10 minutes of looking through this book. So what I'm gonna do, I found a toe up pattern. I'm gonna use this yarn and I'm gonna make my aunt a pair of socks. And I think she'll like this because I think she wears like uh, a lot of like blues and greens and kind of neutrals. So I think she'll like this color way. And the socks we're making are these ones. They're called Gerst. And the pattern is by Verena Kaur. Let's see, they have, it doesn't really say. It just says they have half twisted rib and then it just says main stitch pattern. But they're in it from the toe up. So I'm gonna learn something new. It also uses Judy's Magic Cast On, which I've heard of, but I've never used. I'm gonna start doing that now. I'm gonna knit the first sock, like, cause that's how I'm getting myself to knit both socks. So I'm gonna knit the whole first sock and then I will start knitting the second one. <laughs> and that's when I'll start recording again. Unless I run into some serious issues, then I'll check in with you before that because I am a little intimidated by the toe up. Okay, I'm gonna knit now. <laughs> It's been about a week, unfortunately. This sock is done and I won't show you too much because, um, do I have like horror movie lighting right now? I feel like the lighting is good, but I feel like it's also giving like campfire, like I'm about to tell you a scary story. Whatever, this is a scary story. This is a toe up sock. Like I said at the beginning, my challenge to myself, do a toe-up sock. This toe-up sock involves doing Judy's magic cast on, which is indeed magic. And Judy is for sure a sorcerer of some sort because that cast on was so challenging. Um, but it looks like literally nothing. Like where even is the cast on? So it's definitely like magic. I was also using needles that I learned I hate. Another thing I've learned on my sock journey, I hate, <laughs> hate is a strong word, but I really don't like the Knitter's Pride Zing needles, I think they're called. I much prefer the Knitter's Pride Carbons with a K. And I don't know if they're meant, I don't, I don't know anything about these. I just know that I like them and they're, they're all black. Like whatever size you get, they're black. 
which is not good because the numbers also rub off as you use them. So I started putting like little specks of nail polish on them to, sh to tell me which, which ones are which size. But yeah, I don't know anything about them besides they have actual points. Whereas the Zing ones were like very flat on the top and I was not liking that. Like it was so hard to get my needle to go into the stitches with the Zing ones. So these are my new favorite double points. They're also like not very expensive and they're hella light and they're <laughs> like, why am I talking about this? Who cares? I was like so happy when I got these in the mail, but I had to wait like a week. So I basically knitted this entire sock with needles that were really not doing it for me. And it was really awful. And I think that's also why this sock, like I hope my tension isn't messed up because I'm gonna knit each sock with a different kind of needle. It's like the same size and it's the same person knitting the sock, but is our tension gonna be different? Like look at this sad <laughs> sock. It's not blocked, but we'll see. What else did I learn? I learned that this is called the caterpillar stitch and it's really easy. I also learned that um, I think in the beginning of this video, I said I wanted a simple sock with like no lace pattern and simple socks, although pretty are kind of boring. I much prefer a lace pattern because it keeps my mind a little bit more occupied. Whereas this, I was just like going, 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 like trying to get to the end. And it's not as easy as just doing stockinette. So it's like, it's not as mindless as stockinette, but it's not as s mentally stimulating as a lace pattern. So it's kind of like in the middle and I don't know that I wouldn't be in the middle right now. <laughs> I'm gonna start my next sock and I thought it would be fun to do, to attempt to do, to do Judy's magic cast on on camera because it literally took me about 30 minutes to do the cast on and then do the first row. I'm gonna switch cameras because my camera's gonna die and then I'm gonna do Judy's magic cast on and we'll see how long it takes. Okay, this is my phone. Let me open up the book. Let's see. I dog eared it. I'm like dog earing. I got post its in here. I got some pen on the front of this somehow. Like, what is this book gonna look like by the end of our by the end of our year? It's gonna be trashed, but it's gonna be like my most prized possession. <laughs> All right, so these are I guess week 34, the Gerst socks by Verena Kors. I'm gonna start my left foot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my Judy's Magic Cast on now. Let's see if I can remember. Oh wait, no, I definitely am not gonna be able to remember how to do this. I'm gonna need my handy dandy iPad to load a YouTube video for me to show me how to do this because I definitely need help and there was this lovely little lady I don't I don't actually know anything about or her dimensions but this lovely lady on YouTube who had a tutorial on how to do Judy's magic cast on with double points because Judy's magic I first I watched a whole tutorial on how to do it and then I realized that they had circular needles and I was like well that's not gonna help me at all so let me watch this video and get my um, cast on ready and then we will attempt to start the sock together since it was so awful the first time With a parallel I'm going to take the yarn the working yarn is going to be over my index finger and the tail yarn is going to be over my thumb. Now I'm going to take the yarn and I'm just going to put it onto the top needle, okay? Now you can call it a top needle or you can call it needle one, you can call it needle A, whatever. I always say whatever you call things, are, it's fine, just be consistent so you don't confuse yourself. Now, what you want to remember is that the index finger yarn always goes around the bottom needle and the thumb yarn always goes around the top needle. So just keep that in mind and once you get it in your head, it's very easy. From the bottom, up, and into the middle. Now we have a stitch on each needle. Now we're going to take the thumb yarn in the middle, over the top. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna do this. Stitch it on that needle. Show me the bottom one one more time. This one. Around the bottom. Okay. Okay. Do yes. not get this too tight. If you do, 
got it. Okay, thank you, lady. I have my stitches on my needle now. Oh wait, I think I still need her help. Okay, no, I remember how to do this now. Thank you, Nancy. Now I have all my needles, or no, no, I have all my stitches on two needles. And now I'm gonna add, it is almost 10 p.m. So I'm a little tired. Forgive me for always filming when I'm tired, but I just, I got a burst of energy. Also, I finished my first sock, so I was like, oh, time to film. This is Judy's magic cast on. <laughs> it literally looks like nothing because I'm holding it together with my fingers. But I'm going to knit the stitches off. And it's like you knit the top needle first. Watch I do this wrong because I can wait another four minutes to watch the rest of Nancy's video. It's 10 p.m. like I said, I'm trying to I'm trying to cast on the sock and get it going so I can go home and get in my bed and just knit this one. Oh yeah, this, I now I'm remembering that this was tricky. And like, I'm sorry, you can't even see this, but like, it's not even that interesting. It's just like, <sighs> oh my gosh, I almost lost one of my stitches. It's because I'm goofing off right now, filming this. <sighs> Nancy literally said, you don't want your shit to get too tight because you won't be able to get that shit off the needles. She said that, I'm so many words. Three, I got, I got four of them off. Let me show you. I'm too scared to show you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want it to all fall off and have to do it again. This is like amazing. Like I had no idea what the hell Judy's Magic Cast on is, obviously, because I've never done toe up socks. But I was like, oh, it's probably simple because it was made by someone named Judy. So it's probably like a modern day knitting invention. Cause I like, oh my God, I'm this up right now. God damn it, I just messed it up. Let me try this again. Ow! God, what a shit show. How did people even come up with this shit? Like, how did Judy come up with this? This shit is magic. It definitely, like, has a good rhythm once you get the rhythm down. It's just like getting them off the needles that I'm really struggling with. Alright, attempt number two to knit the stitches off of these two needles and onto my four needles that I'm going to be working with. Also, this pattern is written for magic loop. Like, they don't even give you instructions for how to do this on double points. And I'm not a magic loop gal. I'm, I don't like the magic loop. So I kind of had to just pay attention while I was knitting this to make sure I was like doing the steps correctly because she just calls out needle one and needle two. Basically my first two needles were needle one and my second two needles were needle two. It's like hard not to get like the knitting hella tight when you're doing shit like this because you get like so tense so you don't want to lose any stitches. I got my four stitches. Yes! This is like one of those knitting things that's like kind of a pain for me right now. I don't know, maybe it'll be easier in the future, but it's like kind of a pain to do, but like once I did it, I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Now I see the appeal and although it's tricky, like like if I were to design a pair of toe up socks, I would definitely use Judy's magic cast on because it's kind of amazing. And I'll show you what it looks like after I get all these stitches off of these needles. It is pretty cool looking. Like you make like a little patch of knitting. Okay, I got the stitches off of the first needle and now I'm gonna get them off of the next needle. And the next needle's gonna be easier. So it'll be a little bit less entertaining. So I'll see you in a sec. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> Can you see my cast on? It's beautiful. Wow, it literally looks like nothing. Well, there it is, that's the cast on. It literally looks like nothing, but it's something, okay? It was challenging. And if you could see what I could see, then you would see like stitches that are coming out of nowhere. Like this shit is magic. This is like a toe that I just formed out of thin air. Like there's no seam. 
Well, obviously there's no seam because I'm casting on new stitches, but whatever. Explaining things is hard. And I'm really, I'm not like explaining something I know absolutely nothing about. Well, that's the, that's my tippy toe. That's my tippy toe. This is the beginning of the sock. And then it's gonna turn into this. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on this because I don't think I should talk to the camera anymore um, because I'm just saying gibberish at this point. So I'll see you in a little while. Several days later. Pair number three is finished. And I am in Michigan now at my grandmother's house in the bathroom, literally sitting on the toilet, but I'm wearing clothes. I'm not, I'm not using the toilet. And I finished pair number three. I am so worried that these are going to be my first fail in this series because they are so tight. They are so tight, like, okay, this one, wait. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, well, anyway, I'm so worried that these are going to be like, like, look at them. And I tried to like, put one on and I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't really get it over my heel. Okay, so I'm really hoping that we can block them and they will loosen up a little bit. I think it was the stitch pattern. It was the caterpillar stitch, which is like Helen knits and pearls. I think I, that was very tight. The needles were also smaller. And I think, I think it really it was the stitch. Like I was knitting very, very tightly, tighter than usual maybe. I really hope I didn't, I really hope. <laughs> I did not mess these socks up, but there's no point in really like going into detail. Like, let's just block them and see if they grow. And luckily I have those sock blockers from Sam. Thank you, Sam. I'm hoping that I can like get them wet and force them over the sock blockers and they'll be okay. So let's do it. <laughs> got my toothbrush, got my floss, got my toothpaste, got my socks, all my sunscreen options. <laughs> there must be something wrong with the plug <laughs> in the sink because uh, it's not staying plugged up. <laughs> um, so I'm just like running the water, which is probably a no-no. This is just like a fail of a sock video. Like, it's only sock number three and we're already messing things up. Watch the water, it's just slowly draining away. It's so sad. I'm gonna have to find a different sink to do this in next time. Okay, the sock blockers, like I think the sock blockers are saving the day because they fit over the sock blockers. I'm so happy. I was scared that they weren't going to fit for the sock blockers, but they do. And they look pretty sick. Like, check out that self-striping yarn. <laughs> I'm so hyped. I really, like, I really hope that this, the blocking will save these socks because, like, these are part of my, like, Seattle plan. Like, I can't show up to Seattle with socks for two out of my three people that I wanted to make socks for. I'm gonna hang these up to dry and I'm gonna start on my next pair <laughs> pair number four so I'll see you when they're dry they're finished ta-da <laughs> they are dry and they have stretched quite a bit since I was in the bathroom blocking them I did take them off yesterday while they were a little bit damp still but almost dry and I tried them on just to make sure that they did indeed or they were indeed going to fit a foot and I did struggle a little bit to get them over my heel but I think it's gonna be okay <laughs> they're also like a tiny bit long in the toe for me which I think is good because my aunt's like a half size bigger than me so I'm hoping that that little bit of room will be perfect for her. She's also pretty skinny, so maybe she has skinnier heels than me <laughs> and she'll be able to get these on with no problem. <laughs> it could be worse, like I was scared they weren't going to fit at all. So, yeah. 
so that's what they look like up close it's caterpillar stitch and then like a stockinette um, of the stockinette for the toe the bottom of the foot and then the heel is a German short rose heel um, this is my first German short rose heel and I think the self striping yarn looks like the coolest in the heel because of the short rows you can actually see like a, a wider stripe forming and it was like that on both heels which is pretty cool and the German short row seal was actually kind of fun <laughs> I mean yeah it was fun I have fun knitting it was fun and it kind of like helped me realize like how short rows work because the first time I did or like the first sock that I did I was just like doing I was just following the instructions and doing the short row and then the second foot or the second sock I had I already knew how I was going to do this so it kind of allowed me to like understand what the short rows are doing because I didn't really realize that when you do short rows you're like you're like knitting less and less each time and you're leaving stitches hanging like on either side of your needles and then when you go to like shape your heel you kind of like hoist everything up and it creates like a little cup and that's your heel and i thought that that was like you know i had like a light bulb moment when i was thinking about that i was like oh that's how it works <laughs> so that's what i learned um on this pair i learned the german the german the german short rose heel i also learned the toe up i totally forgot about my struggle with judy's magic cast on because i did start my fourth pair and those have judy's magic cast on too and i'm like i got it down like i started the fourth pair on the plane and i didn't want to watch nancy's tutorial on how to do judy's magic cast on while i was like sitting in between two people on a plane so I just tried to remember how to do it and I did. I remembered how to do it and I did it and I knit like a full toe on that plane. Unfortunately, I needed to switch needles because they were way too big. So I'll talk about that in video four, but I, I am comfortable with Judy's Magic Cast on kind of. Much more than I was at the beginning of this video where I was just like, what the hell is going on? Anyway, those are the two things that I learned <laughs> in this video. And look at how great they look on my sock blockers. I don't even want to take them off and put them on my foot because I think they look better on the sock blockers. Also, they're not for me. They're for my aunt. So I don't want to take them on and off too much. This is the Gerst sock. And it was... It was, um... My least favorite sock so far only because I need more mental stimulation. <laughs> Also, I don't think I love purling on double points. Doing a one by one rib on double points is okay, but this was like a couple purls, a couple knits, and I just don't know that I enjoyed it. So nothing against the pattern. I do love the way the socks looked. I just didn't have that much fun actually knitting them. Also, like I had my own struggles with like the zing needles that I was not enjoying and like my struggle with Judy's Magic Cast on in the beginning, so. But they do look nice and I really hope my aunt likes them. Okay, that's it for sock number three. Next week, or actually, this this pair of socks took me two weeks. Like, this took me the longest, and I think it's because I didn't really want to knit the sock anymore. I kind of got bored with the pattern. But also, the needles were smaller, and whatever. It just, like, was the slowest sock so far. And I am no longer in California, as I mentioned when I was in the bathroom. And I'm worried that I'm not going to have enough time to knit a pair of socks for my uncle and my cousin, because I'm going to be in Seattle next week, and so far I only have half a sock for my uncle. But that sock is coming along much faster, and I think because it has a cable pattern. So I'm like, gotta get to the cable, gotta get to the cable. That's it, I'm gonna wrap up this video so I can start sock number four video. Thank you for watching and um, following along on my sock knitting journey and slight struggle. It's been, I'm having a great time, as I've said multiple times. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you like my sock knitting videos. Also check out my band-aid that forever lives on my thumb because my thumb hurts from using double points. Okay, bye.